Hello, this is Wes at Bad Seed Games, and today we're going to continue on with the tutorial that we were working on in previous videos. And in the previous videos, you notice, remember, we created a two conditional statements and the systems that would drive them, one calculating whether or not the player is within a range, and whether or not the player is visible. Now, this one we're going to go over the cone of vision sensor, but before we do so, I'm going to have to explain a few things. Now, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to get the rotation of the radar. Since it's always pointing at the player, or the green sphere here, it's going to have what's called a local rotation space. Now, it's going to be rotating in the y-axis, so we need to figure out what the angle is. Now, if you take a look in the inspector, notice how the rotation is going up, and it will go down into the negative. This is all well and good, however, the only problem is when we're running the action, it won't actually see it in negative. It'll go from 0 to 360 clockwise, and once it reaches 360, it will reset back to 0. So that's going to require us to do a little bit of math. So let's get to it. All right, first things first, let's create a new finite state machine system. And let's name it um, angle detector. Okay. Now, a couple things we're going to need to do. We're need, going to need to define what the range is in the degrees. So that's going to be a float value. So let's see. View angle. OK. All right, so let's get this started. First off, in this particular state, let's go ahead and set up the calculations that we're going to need. Now, the first thing we need to do is we need to get the rotation of the radar. Now, this is going to be based in local space. So, for example, if the enemy rotates, the radar is still is not technically going to rotate because it is in what's called local space. Now, there are two main spaces, world space and local space. World space is pretty much the entirety of the world. So, if something is at 0, 0, 0 position and rotation in the world space, it is in a specific spot. But local space is basically the radar has a local space which is based on the basic enemy since it is parented into this particular system. All right. Now I could go on and on and on about the definitions between the two, but this the basic two things that you need to understand. So first off, let's get the rotation. Get rotation. You can find this in the transform subsection. And the game object that we're going to get the ex extract the rotations for is itself, but we're going to get the angle. Now, the viewing angle is what we're going to set, so we need to create a new angle. So, let's just call it angle for now. And store it in angle. All right, now when that's done, we're going to have to tell it to go to the next event, so... And let's add in the finish transition. And there we go. All right, so the next thing we need to do is we need to go into the state to figure out what we're going to do with it. Now, before we do that, though, we need to do a bit of calculation because the angle that we're going to be getting is going to basically be 0 to 360. So when it's turning clockwise, we can do a basic... We can basically compare it but when we're going counterclockwise, we have to do a bit of math. So let's create a new state, and let's create this as the start state. Let's name it. Oh, and good naming conventions is a good habit to get into, because it will save you headaches in the future. All right, so what we need to do in this particular state is we need to do two operations. And they're both float operators. Now, you can find these in the math subsection, and what this does, it'll basically allow you to do pretty much any mathematical function on two float variables. Now, the first float we're going to compare is 360 degrees, because 360 degrees minus the viewing angle will get us the result that we need. Okay, and we're going to store this in the angle to the right and angle to the left. 
these are also going to be floats. So since this one is 360 minus the viewing angle, it's going to be over here. So this is going to the left. And the second one, we're going to go and calculate the same thing, but in reverse, so the view angle, and to the right. Now, for this one, you could just basically grab the viewing angle, but it's... And it would save you a bit of time, but I'm doing this mostly because this is how I set it up, and if you wanted to go ahead and just abandon that particular one, you can do so, and it shouldn't affect the results. So now that that's done, we've calculated the angles, and we've sent them into the proper variables, going into the next one. Okay. So once we're done calculating the angle, we're going to have to go into a new state, and this one we're going to be comparing. Now, again, two float operations, but we're going to be doing compare, because this will give us the minimum and maximum options. So for example, if it's greater than or less than, we can then use it there. So we're going to feed it two variables, the angle Yep, the angle. And we're going to compare if it's to the left. Now, to the left, this basically means if angle is greater than angle left, that means that it is within here. So that means that we're going to fire off an event, but before we do that, let's create the event. So, range and out of range. And let's add those in so that we can access them within range, out of range. Now that they're in here, so since if angle is going to be greater than angle left, that's going to be going to the within range. Let's set up the angle again. Compare it with the angle to the right. Now this one's going to be on the other side, so if that means that if it's greater than, actually, sorry, just give me one second, yep, greater than on this one, yep, sorry, if it's less than, then that means that it's within range. Okay, now that's all well and good, but since we don't actually have any actions setting it up so that it will use, well, so that it will fire when it's out of range, let's set up a next frame event. How this will work is it will run through the, these two conditional statements, and if it does not satisfy either, it'll then go to the next event, and the next event will be out of range. All right, so let's add a state. So if it's out of range, Is it not doing that? There it goes, okay. Okay, now when we're in here, what it's going to do is it's going to extract the angles, calculate them, get the angles of here, compare them, and then go either in range or out of range. Now, this would work well and good, but since these are dead ends, let's add a finished transition and loop it back into the calculate. We don't need to loop it back into the start because we've already done the calculations and they're being stored in here. So let's finish that up. Now, what are we going to do in here? Well, that's actually quite simple. We're going to tell it to set a conditional statement in the basic enemy. So let's go back into the conditions and let's add a boolean value for then field. So within visual field. It's a simple boolean operation, yes, no. 
and let's expose that to the inspector so that we can see it change when we're running. So in range, if you've been following along, you'll probably realize which action we're going to be using. We're going to be using the set FSM boolean. Put one in both. Now let's set it up. Again, we're going to be getting the finite state machine on basic enemy. It's going to be conditions, and this one is going to be within visual field. So if it's in range, check it to yes. Same for the out of range. However, let's leave it at zero. All right, so let's give that a shot and see what happens. Let's take a look at the inspector. Okay, notice it's not within its visual field. Aha! Little bit of a problem here. And I know exactly what's going on here. Because we have the ang viewing angle, but it's set to zero, which means that it doesn't have a cone of vision. So let's give it 45 degrees. Now let's try it again. Okay, and... It's now in range. But it's a very narrow field. I'm just going to calculate one second. Okay, so I figured out what's going on, and this is an oversight on my part. Now, when we're going to go back to the start state, since we needed to subtract the viewing angle from 360 degrees, I had it set to add. So let's change that to subtract. And one other thing, when calculating it, I had it calculating in the world space, but like I explained before, we're going to extract the self space. So let's give that a shot now. Right. It's within the cone of vision, and it's out of the cone of vision. And let's take a look on the basic enemy. So we've got the player within range. Is it visible, and is it within the visual field? So behind the wall, getting close. It's now in the distance range. It's now visual, and now it's within the cone of vision. Okay. Now, in the next few tutorials, I'm going to go over some additional ste steps to see about using this information. But for now, this I hope this answers any question you may have had. And if you like this video, feel free to comment, rate, and subscribe. Have a good one.